In the spirit of reconciliation, we are theatre and Theatrically Allowed acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Hey theatre folks, welcome back to the We Are Theatre podcast. Today we are joined by our final Come From Away member on our trip to Gander. Joseph, hello, how are you? I'm well, Josh, how are you? I am fantastic. Uh, you're one of the newest Come From Aways to the Australian cast here, so we're going to pick your brain on that a little bit later. But for now, what through this process, what have you found to be your favourite part of the Come From Away story? Um, the... The whole rehearsal process has been unlike anything I've experienced before. Um, Just really, you know, the creatives really taking the time um, with the the cast to really connect to not only the their characters and and the story of Come From Away, but their own their own stories and their own connection to to nine eleven, and and going back. You know, you know, we we have we have conversations about you know where we were when when it happened and uh, you know how it how it how it made us feel and and our, our obviously our our emotions at the time and, and and connecting to that and you know obviously finding relevance to that in the in our characters but just relevance in our lives and how it affected us. Um, which has been remarkable. And then, you know, even just sitting down with, with the cast and creatives and, and watching documentaries as part of the rehearsal period and then debriefing about it afterwards as a collective, uh, it's just really been uh, quite empowering. And, and you know, it, it, you don't feel like you're just, your foot's on the gas um, going 100 miles an hour. You, you have that time to actually reflect on on what this story is actually about. Yeah, I, I love that. And coming in uh, to the show, obviously you're coming in to the show as Kevin. Um, so what's it been like learning who Kevin is, but also all the material uh, to go into the show as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's two Kevins in the show. There's a Kevin T and a Kevin J. Uh, so we'll... <laughs> We'll clear that straight out of the gate. So I play Kevin J, um, so who is actually partners with the Kevin T, uh, and and coming into this, we're we're quite aware that these stories, um, a lot of these stories are based on real life people and and the the stories they shared, um, and so you've kind of got that in the in the back of your mind that these are real people that. You're not necessarily portraying, but you're you're reflecting a, a snippet of their life and a moment that happened um, during this tragedy. So you've kind of yeah, you're kind of trying to remember that this isn't a you know these characters aren't just kind of plucked from thin air, um, which is which is quite important. So I guess just having that in the back of your mind. But the thing with with everyone in this show is they they have their prominent character but you'll see it's such and such and others so kevin jay and others and so everyone um you know is portraying usually a minimum of three different characters in the show um you know you have uh what they call them uh, the plain people uh you have your ganderites uh and then just the smorgasbord of so many other characters that kind of uh uh, come and go through the show. So uh, the other the other prominent role that uh, I play uh, is is Ali, who uh, isn't uh, he's he's a uh, kind of a composition of of many stories and many characters as well. So um, and and uh, an extreme contrast to to Kevin Jay as well in terms of their personalities and their backgrounds and uh, and all that. So, you know, Kevin J is, uh, you know, is American from Brooklyn. Um, and then you've got Ali, who's a, 
an Egyptian Muslim, uh, and so it's um, it's it's quite amazing and and quite a um, a privilege to p- play very very different uh, contrasting characters as well in the same show, nonetheless. <laughs> um, getting your head around all the different dialects and accents, it's a big part of this show. So I touch on it every time I get to chat to somebody. Um, how was that kind of getting your head, one, around the very unique uh, Gander accent um, and then having a <coughs> collection of your Brooklyn and everyone else that you get to portray? Yeah, it's it's... It's really cool. Like I, I find it extremely fascinating, um, the the accents. And we've had uh, Joel Gould, who uh, is an accent and dialect coach, um, helping us through this process. And he's he's just remarkable. And I, like I said, I just I just find it so fascinating, um, just literally wrapping your mouth around these uh, these different shapes and accents and. Um, just the intricacies of it and how detailed it is and um, how, how much attention to detail they have with this as well. Um, So yeah, the Gander accent is, is so unique. Like it's, it's, it's North American for the most part, but then you've got, you know, Canadian influences and then Irish influences. And it's, it's, it's not like you can just, go in one complete direction and just go, oh, I'll just do a Canadian accent or I'll just do an Irish accent because it's, it's not at that. And so it's, it's almost flip flopping between, you know, kind of three different accents, whether it's North American, Canadian or Irish and just finding when and where to switch between, uh, between the three. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you know, the, then you've got things like the, just the, their, their rhythms and the melody of the way they speak as well, which is such a big part of it. Uh, as well it's not just getting the accent correct but it's you know it's it's how musical the language is and so many aspects to it and it's it's like I said it's it's really great that they they take the time to uh, to really make sure that you've uh, you're hitting hitting the nail on the head um, I guess you know things like Kevin J the the American accent uh, in Australia I mean we're, we're just we're so exposed to an American accent, whether it's TV shows or, um, you know, movies, uh, uh, all, all that. So I think, you know, we're probably more exposed to the American accent than the Americans are exposed to an Australian accent. Uh, so we're fortunate in, in that capacity. And I think in, in Australia, if you're, you're in this industry, you're just expected to be able to do an American accent. And I think it's something that we, you know, we just inadvertently start doing as as performers so um again not not without its faults you know you still get pulled up on certain things and things that you don't even things that you don't even think about like you know we say tv and we we emphasize the v whereas they say tv and it like emphasizes the t so it's just little time. little thing <laughs> you just it's so subtle but like i said the attention to detail is is quite remarkable and then uh, Ali being Egyptian, um, you know, there's there's uh, a little bit of Arabic in there as well. Uh, fortunately, I grew up in an Egyptian household, so uh, I I was kind of uh, I ticked that box pretty early. So the the Arabic is uh, I speak Arabic, so it came uh, second nature to me. So I'm quite fortunate with that, and yeah, it's 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 good. Apparently, I'm the first. Uh, actual Egyptian to play this role as well. So that's really cool. That's awesome. Um, What song are you most excited to um, perform on that first night that you get an audience in? Uh, The opening number is so, ah, it's so good. Like it's just so energetic and it just, uh, you know, comes out all guns blazing and it really, really invites the audience in and it gets you really ramped up for, you know, this, this uh, hundred minute, 90 minute show, uh, you know, that you just, you, you, you put your foot on the accelerator and you don't take your foot off. Uh, and that's, you know, that's kind of the feeling the audiences get as well. I mean, I was, I was fortunate to see this show, um, when, when, um, 
you know, before COVID hit and before I even knew I was going to be in the show. So you kind of see it from a very different perspective as opposed to watching a show when you know you're about to partake in it. And you just you just feel like as an audience member, you can't catch your breath. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know if you've seen it. I, I find you... it that you're either you're either laughing or you're crying. There's no in between. Like it, it's, but it's snap, snap, snap. Like you don't get a second to process what just happened. It's literally one emotion to another, and then you get to the end and you're like, I need to breathe. A hundred percent, and and you feel like, look, I, I saw it with my wife, and I reckon like, you know, you're driving home and you you have so many things you want to talk about, but at the same time, you're almost sitting there in silence, just kind of taking in what just happened. Um, And yeah. And and so I I think, yeah, just, I think that that opening number just sets up, it it sets up the, the trajectory that the show is about to, uh, about to uh, take on. Uh, And so I think that's important. It's such an important number. And, um, to, to just kind of, uh, I guess, instantly uh, instantly tell the audience that this show is going to move pretty damn quick. Uh, so, you know, be alert <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, what's your experience been like coming in to the cast? Obviously, like, there's you, you're one of the newer cast members. These guys have been together for nearly two years now. So what's it like coming into that kind of preformed thing and get to kind of figure out how other people have developed their characters over time and that type of thing. Yeah, really great. I mean, I, I, I really enjoy it. I, I enjoy kind of coming into a show. I've done um, five professional shows and four out of those five I've been a recast. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite, you know, it, it's a skill set in itself to kind of come in a little bit later and, um, I really don't mind throwing a spanner in the works and, and uh, I guess making it a little bit more uh, unpredictable uh, for, I guess, for the other performers as well. And I, I think people appreciate that as well. Like the performers appreciate that, that they're not, you know, that they're being challenged and, and not just kind of regurgitating what they've been doing for, for such a long time. And um, I think the, the, the important thing is, I mean, Ali kind of sits on his own, uh, has a few little interactions, but with Kevin J, he's in a relationship with Kevin T. And so obviously uh, Doug, Doug Hansel, who plays Kevin T, was uh, obviously performing with another performer playing Kevin J. And so coming in and just kind of recreating that relationship and, um, you know, the interactions that we have and, and you know, finding finding moments and, and playing things and and uh and, and doug's really great like he goes oh look it's we've we've never done it like that before but not in a negative way like it's 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 fresh and it's yeah. kind of it's it's sparking kind of new inspiration and new ideas and um uh kind of keeping the the relationship fresh and, and recreating it and and that's that's i mean that's like anything. I mean, you know, different people are going to have their own kind of interpretation and, and spin on it. So I think it's, it's, I really enjoy that aspect. Um, in terms of, I guess, just coming in, everyone else is, they're just, everyone's just so warm and welcoming and, and you've, you almost feel like you were never not part of that original cast. Like it's just, it's such a great family atmosphere and it's, it's something that uh, the creatives have, have really emphasized from the start that this, that the show is about community and it's about what happened at that time in terms of people supporting each other. But they, they said it and I, I, I uh, obviously I'm paraphrasing, but it was about um, the community that we create on the stage, not as, characters but as as people and as friends and then carrying that off the stage like the community and the friendships that we create off the stage and all that reads um when we're performing on stage and and supporting each other like there's there's so many moments in the show that audiences don't see that is 
it's it's literally about if I don't do this, if I don't move this particular chair in the right spot, or if I don't bring this prop on for this person, I'm affecting someone else's performance and someone else's show. So it's really all about it's all about coming together and and everyone, uh, you know, really being hand in hand in hand and and unified and and um, and like I said, I, I don't think there's been a moment where I haven't felt that even coming in as a as a new cast member. Yeah. What does it mean to you to be at this point, um, obviously where the world's at with theatres reopening, what does it mean to you to be a part of a cast that's one of the first shows to reopen after the lockdown? It's, uh, yeah, it's 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 quite amazing. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit, um, still feels like a little bit of a fantasy, <laughs> like it's, like a fairy tale kind of thing. Um, and I, I consider myself very, very fortunate. And I think we're very fortunate uh, in in Australia and in Victoria particularly. We did uh, a lot of hard yards for, for a few months there. And, you know, I mean, I was out of work for months on end. And, and again, even coming out of it, it was like, well, even after this, what's, what's going to happen? What's next for me? What, you know, how, how well is uh, are things going to be after, after this pandemic? Like, will things pick up again? Uh, and these are questions that I guess, you know, not just uh, theatre people ask, but many people asked of their own respective industries. And so to not only see the industry kind of blooming again, but to be part of that is, is, is very special. Um, and uh, I, I can consider myself extremely lucky. I, I, like I consider myself extremely lucky to be part of this industry full stop. Um, I, you know, I, I, I have so many moments sometimes when I'm, I'm on stage and having a quiet moment of something else happening. And I, I might be just sitting there on stage and I, I go back to like 10 year old me at a, at a, at a, a, a primary school show or something. And, and like, like telling myself, did you think you'd be, did you think you'd be here like 20, 30 years later? And it's a, it's a really friendly reminder to myself sometimes of, of how, fortunate I am and, and how far I've come in the industry. So yeah, to kind of backtrack and answer your question, it's, it's very special. And there's, there's, I, I personally don't take it for granted um, at the best of times, but even at the worst of times when, when things, uh, you know, when we're looking at it from a, from a very different perspective, um, you know, I consider myself very lucky and it's it's a very special show. Amazing. Guys, that's almost the perfect note to wrap up on. So as we pack our bags and head home from Gander, we want to make sure that you guys have all got tickets to the upcoming productions. There's Melbourne, Brisbane and Sydney consider, hoping COVID all calms down around. But Melbourne's definitely out right now, guys. So make sure you're going and grabbing your tickets. Come from way.com.au right now um, to check that out. To wrap things up, Joseph, what is your favourite moment in the show? And you can answer this as an audience member or a cast member because you've seen the show. Um, like how how do I how do I kind of say that without like spoiler alert kind of thing? Um, there's there's a particular moment in in. Beverly's song, uh, Me and the Sky. Um, uh, can, I, can I say spoiler alert? It, it should be fine. Most people probably have listened to the soundtrack at least, so they would know what she sings. So. Yeah. And I, I, no matter how many times I listen to this on the soundtrack or watch it in rehearsal, um, now this is a very, very rare moment that I'm actually off stage uh, <laughs> And I watched this moment and um, 
uh, Bev says the one thing I loved most was used as the bomb. And just the the staging of it, the the musicality of it, um, the 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 build up in that song, it just it gets me every single time. And I think it just really it really hits home about what actually happened on that day. Yeah. Um and yeah, it it's just uh, such a poignant moment in the show, and it's it's one of those moments where, again, like what you're saying in terms of feeling like you're laughing, and then suddenly you're not. Um, it's that moment where that, that air is like completely sucked out of the room, and it's just, yeah. yeah, you know. And the song starts with this, you know, this this young, you know, a, a young girl telling about her dream of becoming a pilot, and it's this feel good kind of this is what I'm going to do with my life. And then it just, it, it takes this turn. And I think it's the same, it's the same turn that happened on 9-11. It was like, everyone was just going about their business as usual. And then everything just came to a stop. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's such a, I say one form of moment in the show from a, you know, musical theater piece, but, it's just it. It really, it really, it really hits home and and really makes you reflect about about that day and what happened. So, yeah, that um, that I guess that would yeah that that would be my answer. That's fantastic, and that's where we're going to wrap things up on our trip to Gander, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, Joseph. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, and thank you for everyone that has come and listened to the last four weeks of us here in Gander. And we'll be back next week with a brand new episode of the We Are Theatre podcast. See you guys. Mm-hmm.